Hey everybody, what's going down? Back again. It's uh, Twin Peaks time. Uh, I had a chance to watch the uh, episode four today. Um, I'll probably just end up, at least throughout the rest of this coming week, I'll probably try to get one a day. Um, because we're we're slowly closing in on um, the the big reveal episode and the uh, conclusion episode of uh the Laura Palmer case um about four about five episodes to go I think five or six so uh after well after after this one I think it's uh five uh so yeah getting close but there's lots of good stuff to come um and uh so let's get started with episode four and the episode title officially is Laura's Secret Diary all right so the uh, opening of this episode is pretty cool. Uh, you've got this weird camera shot of this kind of sp inside or of some kind of sp weird uh, space. Looks like some kind of weird tunnel looking thing. And the camera slowly kind of winds out. Um, got this weird music playing. You've almost got like the sound of like a, one of those heart monitors in the, in, or, the, or whatever they, they hook you up to at the uh, hospital beeping. You know, like the sound of a heart pulse. Um, you got some, I think it's Laura's voice, um, saying daddy, <laughs> kind of weird. It's all distorted. It's a pretty cool scene. Cause it ends up actually just being a, an acoustic ceiling tile. And it's, it's a really good way to uh, illustrate how out of, out of kind of it, out of it that a uh, Leland is at that time and that thing. So it's pretty cool. What intro, I always thought that was pretty, uh, clever and artistic. So um, yeah, Leland's a bit out of it to say the least, um, but comes to, uh, he's a lawyer, if you didn't know that already, so he's obviously, he's, he'll represent himself, he waves uh, legal counsel, Harry, you know, questions him about Jacques' murder, and nothing new in that part, and then uh, Leland kind of explains, you know, how much his daughter's death affected him, um, kind of, you know, kind of giving us a summary of, of what's been going through his mind or how he's felt ever since, you know, he got the news from, um, from Harry when he, uh, in episode one. Um, yeah. And then he had confesses to killing Jacques. Um, and then, you know, breaks down in tears after that. <laughs> okay. Now we're over at the uh, sheriff's uh, department and more, uh, more comic gold with Andy. <laughs> Tells Doc Hayward that he he flunked his his sperm test. <laughs> Doc's it's like that's not exactly the proper term for it. Then uh, then he's got a great line following up. I wonder if it's the kind of test you can take over like a driver's exam. <laughs> so now Andy's got to go take care of business uh, uh, to get another sample for uh, the Doc because he's been wearing boxer shorts. So maybe he's a uh, the uh, circulation's cut off a little bit down there in, in Manland. Uh, so he goes and grabs a copy of Flesh World, um, tries to sneak to the bathroom, and unfortunately bumps into Lucy. Uh, she looks at the uh, magazine and then looks over at the bathroom and puts two and two together and <laughs> storms off. So not, not a good day so far for Andy. Um, yeah, apparently uh, the judge... Uh, that's gonna sit on uh, both on the bench on Leo and Leland's trials is uh, coming into town, so the, uh, the legal proceedings are moving forward, gonna get underway eventually. Um, and uh, I guess he travels around the uh, the circuit in a Winnebago, so kind of another oddball kind of unique character, you know, just just right and uh, fits right in the world of Twin Peaks. Um, Harry got some news, um, about the, uh, house, uh, next to Leland's grandparents or his grandfather's house at Pearl Lakes. Um, and apparently nobody by the name of Robertson ever lived next door to, um, Grandpa Palmer. Um, and the previous owner is in Kalispell, which I'm pretty sure is Montana. So, uh, Leland remembered something, but m maybe he was confused with confusing another house or, or something else. So. At least that information didn't seem to pan out, at least according to, uh, you know, the county records. <laughs> Andy uh, takes care of business, but still can't catch a break. And I don't know if the the bottle was supposed to, I guess it wasn't, did, didn't shatter, but it made a, made a sound like it was, it broke. Um, 
he <laughs> rolls out of the chair and Cooper asks him, Andy, where'd you get that? And Andy's like, I don't want to explain where this came from, which, yeah, that would be a, can you imagine if this was a, like Showtime or HBO and he actually, <laughs> actually said where it came from and described it. And then Cooper, you know, get this look on his face, like, you know, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, no, but he's just talking about his boots. Cause, uh, he, he bought some from uh, Philip Gerard, the one-armed man. And they happen to be the same uh, brand of boot that they found at Leo's with the cocaine. Um, but so that, apparently, they what they got over at Leo's house was not the well, the extra clue that the giant mentioned in his dream that was supposed to be at Leo's. Um, so maybe they'll find it. Maybe someone else will find that extra clue. Hard to say. So yep, time to f find the one-armed man again and see if they can get some more answers. Because he uh, remember he. Uh, was unable to um, inject his his medication and uh, opened that uh, opened the bathroom door and said, you know, he's Bob. He's after you know he's after him now. So he's he's gone off uh, to do who knows what. Um, back at the Great Northern, you know, apparently a famous food critic from Seattle is coming to Twin Peaks. You know, kind of a more of a side uh, story unrelated to the to the main case. Uh, just gloss that over. Uh, Jean Renault shows up um, at Ben's Horn's office, uh, saying he he sells insurance to businesses like you know like One Eye Jacks, which is BS. He's yeah, he's part of the drug trade. <laughs> Don't let him trick you. That's probably a front. Uh, he shows the footage of Audrey uh, tied up. Uh, obviously, Ben is not too pleased about that. Um, Jean says they, which you know the uh, mysterious other party, which of course is Blackie. Um, where they request a large sum of money. Uh, Jean wants to help broker a deal between Ben and this other party, um, but his uh, his demands are that uh, that Dale has to deliver the uh, the ransom to get Audrey back. So you can remember that uh, Jacques and and Bernard um, Jean's brothers are both dead, and they both died in circumstances apparently, you know, related to uh, Dale Cooper. FBI agent, so uh, I guess it's he's uh, looking to uh, get some payback for that, or he thinks he he's going to. Um, apparently, rabbit chili is a special the day of the double R. I don't know if I'd be going for that. Um, Norma gets word of that the food critic, so uh, you know I don't I'm not sure what exactly the quality of the diner food is there, but I don't know. Um, Donna gets uh, her delivery from. Or for Harold Smith, um, Hank finds out that the critic's coming. He decides to spruce up the place to impress the critic. Like I said, more kind of irrelevant side plot for now. Oh, and then we see our friend the red traffic light again. And uh, now Donna's over at Harold Smith's to you know talk, deliver his meal and talk to um, a little more about Laura. Uh, Harold reveals that the, the diary... Of Laura's is in his possession. Um, I guess he didn't know that Donna had already spied at the other the other time she was there. And he reads a passage uh, that Laura wrote it, that her talking about Donna and basically saying, you know, you know that she likes she loves her a lot, but sometimes she doesn't want. She wonders why she giggles at things that uh, that, that Laura tells her that Laura finds strange. Um, and then there's uh, one one. Uh, passage or one uh, quote that I'll just read in full because it's, uh, you know, it's the, the revealing part, the, at least the little glimpse that we get of what's in there so far. And uh, that's the following. But sometimes I worry that she wouldn't be around me at all if she knew what my insides are like. Black and dark and soaked with dreams of big, big men and different ways that they might hold me and take me into their control. So her sexual fantasies, I guess. Uh, so... She's admitting in her own diary, at least, that she's, you know, to you know, some degree of self-awareness of how she's behaving. Um, you know, so, I mean, at least it seems like she's possibly still capable at that point of feeling guilt and remorse. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's a little glimpse into that. Um, uh, Donna asks if they should give it to the police. Harold says uh, that he's, he's basically he's read the whole thing cover to cover. But he's been unable to find any, you know, any conclusive answers as to, you know, who, um, you know, killed her. So apparently she 
didn't um, name the, uh, at least according to Harold, if we can trust him, um, he, she didn't name the, the uh, killer outright. So that's, uh, if we take him at his word, we'll see what kind of person he is as we go on. Um, since we know that Harold isn't agoraphobic and he doesn't go outside, um, basically he is kind of, it's kind of neat. He learns, um, about the outside world by, you know, kind of interviewing people and, and writing their stories down in, in kind of a, what he calls a living novel. So he's, he meets, you know, different people and, you know, kind of cat, you know, and, uh, chronicles, um, their life experiences and their perceptions of the world. So he has this kind of collection that he can, he can reflect upon because, uh, you know, he, he's unable for whatever reason to leave his house. All right. So Ben shows Dale, um, the Audrey video and then asks Dale if he'll deliver the money. So pretty quick uh, scene. Josie returns, um, of course, pretends to play the innocent party in the whole thing. And, you know, and Pete tells her that Catherine died in the fire and Josie, you know, shows some fake sympathy. You know, she's a, an accomplished actress <laughs> in the show. Um, so uh, back at uh, One Eye Jacks, you know, Audrey's pretty much high as a kite. They probably uh, shot her up with heroin again. And apparently Emery is being a bit of a dick to her. Surprise, surprise. Um, he apparently hit her. Um... And, like, Jean, Jean Renault does basically what I imagine is probably the only good thing in the entire series, and that's uh, taking care of old Emery uh, once and for all. So, uh, adios, Emery. Now we've got some more uh, Andy and Lucy drama. Um, Andy, uh, Dale suggested Andy take uh, you know, a walk and get some air. Uh, and then Dale makes the uh, mistake of trying to console Lucy. But he eventually finds out uh, um, that she's not much different with when it uh, regards to what's going on between her ears than uh, most women. <laughs> Doesn't know what she wants. You know, how shocking. Uh, and then Dale, uh, you know, watches uh, Lucy storm off again, upset, and, uh, and then asks... Uh, Harry for a favor. He apparently needs the help of one of the bookhouse boys, but he doesn't want to tell Harry the details. Um, Norma and Hank um, mistake the uh, district attorney for, you know, an actual the the food critic. Um, and uh, Maddie and Donna meet up. Uh, Donna's acting kind of like acting a little, little bit, of, you know, the plant and the bitch a little bit, <laughs> or acting like a bitch to uh, Maddie because she's assuming that that. James and her are an item now, um, and Donna tells Maddie that Harold um, has Laura's uh, secret diary, and uh, Hank find uh, Hank uh, gets uh, the uh, DA's wallet, finds out that he's a district attorney. So uh, yeah, and then Harry goes to meet Josie. Um, of course, she puts on her act again, plays a you know, little Miss Innocent. Uh, um, you know, Harry doesn't know what to make of the whole situation for leaving, so she, you know, oh, how could you, how could you think such horrible things that I might burn my own mill down, you know. Harry's too, uh, too lost in love with her to, to, uh, be able to see through the nonsense. Uh, she then seduces Harry and they start making out while the, uh, Asian ponytail guy peeps through the window. Yeah, so Harry's, Harry's not, uh, not too bright. A bit of a fool when it comes to uh, with Josie. Oh. And enter the judge. Here comes the judge. Uh, Dale meets Judge Sternwood and basically tells him he thinks Twin Peaks is heaven. Uh, and then uh, they, go, they go off to whatever room they're going to interview uh, Leland in. Uh, and Dick, Dick Tremaine comes in. And he's, he tells Lucy that he's ashamed of, of how he's behaved and, you know, that he must do the right thing. And, and Lucy interprets this incorrectly, <laughs> completely opposite of, of, of what Dick's real intentions are. And then he, he shows her the money he's brought to, uh, quote unquote, you know, pay for her little problem. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Lucy and yeah, isn't having a good day either. Yeah, not <laughs> kind, of, kind of a dick move, dick. 
here, uh, I brought the money. Let's get rid of. Let's get an abortion and uh, problem solved. So yeah, Lucy. Uh, Lucy's not uh, thrilled with either Andy or or Dick Tremaine at this point in the show. Uh, Leland meets with the with Judge Sternwood, Dale and Harry. The judge gives a kind of a monologue of, so with a few odd words of comfort for Leland. Uh, Leland goes back to his cell, and uh, Harry says uh, to Dale that everything is set for tonight. According to uh, you know, he he got one of the bookhouse boys to help Dale out for uh, whatever Dale is uh, needing him for. And then <laughs> Ben Horn, surprise, surprise, uh, is. And at the you know at the great northern lobby or off to the side of the lobby, uh, perving on some of the local girls who are entering some kind of a talent contest or beauty contest. And then we see a, a rather strange looking Asian gentleman uh, uh, checking in at the front desk. Uh, yeah, what that's a talk. I mean, yeah, probably did a double take when you saw that guy. Um, Ben, of course, thinks he's being culturally sensitive by bowing, and uh, they exchange bows. Um, then this, uh, Mr. Tajimura, who is apparently from Seattle and pays in cash, which is the description, um, that the, uh, the gal at the front desk got initially of this M.T. Wentz character. Um, so she assumes that this is the famous Seattle food critic and, uh, Let's uh, Norma know, I believe she says that the eagle has landed or something like that. Well, she's just trying to do her job and be helpful, I guess. Um, so apparently the um, Mr. Asian uh, Ponytail Man is Josie's cousin. And I put that word in quotes, uh, Jonathan. Um, but in reality, it looks like he's just another part of the crime group uh, that Josie's been working with. Um... Uh, he must have just flown over overseas because he made a collect call to Hong Kong in a previous episode after he couldn't get a hold of Josie. Uh, he mentions a Mr. Eckhart um, is inquiring about her, so maybe he's the uh, the big boss man of or whatever that this guy answers to. Um, you, he would you know usually won't uh, probably wouldn't address or uh, refer to somebody as Mr. Eckhart or Mr. Whoever um, instead of just merely first name if the person was. Someone of no uh, significance, so this is another character that we're referenced to. Um, Josie mentions that uh, Hank Jennings uh, is, is a possible problem, but uh, Cousin Jonathan will uh, take care of Hank. Um, at the Roadhouse, Dale's uh, waiting for um, the, the Bookhouse boy to show up at, I believe, 9.30, uh, who, of course, uh, ends up being his pal Harry, you know. Harry wasn't going to let him go off and do whatever he was uh, going to do by himself. And to uh, wrap up the episode, uh, Hank answers a knock at the door. Apparently he's, I don't know if he and Norma live at the double R. They have a little side room or if he's living there, you know, on a cot or something in the back. But he's in his pajamas and answers the door. It's after hours and all the lights are off. Uh, nobody's at the door. Then uh, turns around and there's Cousin Jonathan um, uh, appears and uh, Hank uh, tries to attack him. And of course, because we are in the magical TV world of uh, television and in TV land, apparently all Asians know martial arts. So obviously he uh, makes a fast work of Hank and basically gives him an ulti or a, a warning, uh, you know, to not... Uh, interfere with Josie's business anymore, so, uh, he's, he's made his, um, message clear. So, yeah, this episode, um, not as much going on, it's, it's really focused more on side plots, um, bringing in characters, um, like Josie bringing her back into the, into the picture, um, you know, getting a little bit more information on Harold Smith and what he's all about since the other meetings weren't you know, too informative and the fact that he's got the diary. So, and Maddie is, Donna at least is, is determined that she's going to get that diary and read it because, um, she's not completely convinced. It's pretty obvious that, um, Harold and Laura's relationship is how he says it is. You know, she's got a kind of a right to be uh, skeptical given uh, how everything's played out so far. 
Um, yeah, so uh, not as, you know, compared to the last few episodes, it's, you know, not, a, I wouldn't I rank it as high um, as quality, but it's still a good episode. Um, like I said, the, uh, the mission to rescue Audrey is uh, <clears throat> coming to fruition, so uh, that's uh, on the table coming up. Um, yeah, we're going to have uh, Leo's and Leland's at least preliminary hearings, um, and we know that Leo is uh, pretty much, a, as Albert uh, uh, said, uh, Mr. Mr. Potato Head, so uh, I'm not sure how that'll work. Um, Maybe, maybe they will. It's hard to say if they will or won't make him stand trial given his uh, mental state. Uh, I guess Leland, they mentioned that he'll probably plead, you know, insanity or temporary insanity um, as his uh, defense. And, yeah, the whole thing with the food critic, uh, yeah, that right now it's not really anything of ex extreme relevance. Um, and I've seen this sh these episodes so many times that it, you know, just kind of vanishes into the background. But if it's your first time, you know, all the all the different little side plots and everything will, you know, it be intriguing to a degree because you don't know how they've played out yet. So don't let me uh, poo-poo anything if you're a, a new watcher or a new uh, viewer of Twin Peaks. You know, I've, like I said, I've just watched these episodes so much that some stuff, you know... There's, you know, certain parts that I would fast forward through and, and get to the stuff that I really like. But, uh, like I said, don't skip over anything, you know, just enjoy the show for what it is. And it's nice and, I guess, at times to have a little bit of a break from the serious stuff to, you know, have something uh, a little bit lighter. Especially with Andy, uh, Lucy, and, and Dick, um, <laughs> their, uh, their little love triangle situation is, is pretty humorous. So yeah, that uh, pretty much wraps up uh, this episode. Um, I'm not, let's see, yeah, and I did mention that the title was Laura's Secret Diary. Um, I'm looking at Netflix uh, episode five. Uh, it says the description for the next episode is Donna and Maddie plan to steal Laura's secret diary. So that'll give you a, give you a little bit of a heads up uh, of what... Uh, it's going to be going on in the next episode, and uh, as always, I'll come back uh, with that episode as soon as possible. Um, for episode five, I'll probably have it up sometime tomorrow once I get home from work and can watch it and, and get it all recorded. So, yep, expect a uh, uh, episode a day come you know going forward until at least until we hit the uh, conclusion of the Laura Palmer case and. Then we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the calendar and see how how much or how frequent I need to uh, make the rest of the episodes in order to meet the uh, deadline for for season three, and uh, we'll go from there. So, all right, everybody, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, hope you enjoyed the review. And I'll be back with another one real soon. Take it easy.